Hi guys and welcome back to SML. This is the last week we'll be doing SML over video because we will be back to in-person meetings from next week which is really really exciting. Super excited to connect with all of you again in the flesh because I don't know about you but I'm over the whole video situation. But for now we're gonna finish our current series which is talking about four acts of love and Two weeks ago, Zara covered the first two, which was Radical Hospitality and Fearless Conversation. And this week, we're going to do the next and last two, which is Genuine Humility and Divine Anticipation. And if we look back on the life of Jesus, he set many examples for us to follow. But one of the first attributes he displayed um, for us was humility. So I thought that was a good place to start for today because if you think back on Jesus' life and just who Jesus is he could have come down to earth in blazing glory um because he is the son of God he could have had every knee bowing before him and he could have claimed equality to God because he is God but he didn't instead he came down to earth humbly and lived his life as a slave and he spent all of his life glorifying God. He spent all of his time for and with other people. He took time out of his days to build relationships to pe with people, to listen to people, to be there for people, to help people, and to love people. And in that, he pointed a lot of people um, towards God. And in Philippians 2, 1 to 11, it speaks about humility, our humility as well as Jesus' humility. And in verse 3, it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. And then verse 5, it says, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And as Christians, it's very important for us to be living our lives with humility, coming to the realization that our life is nothing but to glorify and live for God. Um, and that also involves us taking our time and spending it with others and realizing that life in general is much bigger than just you. And genuine humility can be broken down into three things, so it involves three things. And the first one being, it involves being appropriately honest, and that means with yourself and with God. It's admitting that you are imperfect and that you have sinned and you will never be perfect but it's also realizing that even in all your imperfections God still sees the greatness that you were originally intended for and he has given you a way to rid yourself of that sin and work towards the greatness that he has in store for you and then the second one is it involves being fully present now unlike God we cannot be in four different places at one time. We are not omnipresent, but we are able to be where we are all at once. And that means dedicating everything to what you are doing in that moment of time. And that means if you are busy ministering to someone or just lending an ear to someone or just being there for someone or helping someone, it's giving everything that you are in that moment and not only half-heartedly helping someone or half-heartedly listening to someone um, but just realizing again coming to realization that life is much bigger than you um, and then the third one genuine humility involves being supernaturally rooted and that it's very self-explanatory it's basically just being rooted in Christ and knowing that you should never stop growing in your relationship with Christ. You should always be learning new things about yourself and about Christ and growing with him. And basically, we just need to get to the point of realizing our lives are nothing but to live for Christ. We are on earth to glorify him with all of our words and actions. And he calls us to humble ourselves before him and lay ourselves um, down and everything we are down in front of him and rid ourselves of ourselves and live for God. Um, because the thing is, we don't know what our actions today are going to mean for tomorrow or in the future, which is why God calls us to humble ourselves and let him lead the way, um, because he knows what's gonna happen. And that actually brings us to the fourth act of love, with the, which is divine dissipation. If you don't know what anticipation is, it's like, anxiously waiting for something that could happen in the future or just waiting on a result of something. It's basically just being anxious about the future or 
holding on or waiting for something that could happen in the future. And divine anticipation it just means, divine means like for God. So just to break it down quickly, it's like anxiously awaiting what God is going to do in the future, either in your life or just in the world, um, and just always being in awe of that. But for this, we're in Matthew 26 and verse 26 to 29. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in these verses, we are reading about communion. And if you don't know what communion is, it's a spiritual practice um, which involves breaking bread or dr and drinking grape juice slash wine, um, depending on where you are and if you are legal. Um, but doing this and during this practice, it allows us to think back on what Jesus did for us on the cross about how he broke his body for us and he bled for us um, so that we may be set free. But not just thinking about in the past, but thinking about what that means for the future and even what that means for us in the present right now. Because we know that what he did back then allows us to be free right now and allows us to get rid of our sins right now. And in that moment, it's just supposed to allow you to just sit back and be in awe of that and be in awe of what God can possibly do in the future and just all the capabilities that he has um, to just change the world in a radical way. Um, and in other words, that's having divine anticipation of what God could do. But the goal of a divine anticipation is not an emotional buzz or a flashy miracle, but to connect with God, Christ and their kingdom. You simply don't know what God is up to at any given point. So we need to be constantly living in divine anticipation for what he might do in our lives or in the lives of people around us. We need to clue into him by seeing him in the past, present and future all at once. Um, so those are the four acts of love. Radical hospitality, fearless conversation, genuine humility, and divine anticipation. And I just pray that as you carry on in your walk with Christ, that you are actively practicing these four acts of love. Um, they are put out there for a reason. They are how God wants us to live. Um, and I just pray that you start getting in the mindset of realizing that everything you do should be glorifying God um, and that you're just able to go out into society and into the world and stand fast in the fact that God loves you um, and that you although you are not perfect God sees the greatness that is within you um, and he's always rooting for you no matter where you are in life God is always rooting for you so I just pray that as you go into the rest of your life that you're just constantly reminded that God loves you so much um, and that he wants you to practice these acts of love um, in order to fulfill your purpose on earth and get to where he wants you to go. So I hope that you've enjoyed this series and all the other series we've done over video and I really really hope that you're able to join us in person from next week it's going to be really exciting to see all of you again in the flesh and just be able to have a conversation with you instead of this whole one way situation um and I'm just going to encourage you to carry on praying for our country and for this virus and that things will start going back to normal slowly but surely and just for the protection of our country um, in every aspect but thank you for watching and listening and I will see you very soon bye